Welcome back. We're going to talk about Jody Arias again. Monica Lindstrom is here. It's so nice to have you come on with us. Thank yeah, you. We know you. you we again. rely on your expertise in the world of legal matters, and you I seem try. to know so much about this. Try to make it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jody Arias, as we all know, uh, and we've talked about this before on on our show, has decided to be her own attorney in the penalty phase of a capital, you know, trial. Is that a good idea? Well, the, no, I would typically say no, yeah. it's never a good idea for a defendant to actually represent themselves because they don't have the legal education, the knowledge, and the experience, but she is facing the death penalty. It didn't go great so far, even though the jury hung, so I would say that it's not a good idea, but she might be able to get some sympathy Mm -hmm. because she's representing herself and they might think, oh, poor thing, we'll just let her live. Can we talk about these extra privileges that mm -hmm. she uh, could possibly get or is getting now? Yeah, she will absolutely get extra privileges because once they represent themselves, defendants are allowed more visitors, uh, more time. In fact, there's not really any limits as long as they're within normal working hours mm -hmm. because she needs to interview witnesses. She needs to find out about what they're going to say, what kind of strategy she's going to use. Right now, she gets you know a visit here and there. She gets a little bit of time on the phone, but since she's representing herself, she'll have almost, like I said, unlimited amounts of time to be able to prepare. Back to your comment on sympathy. Now, when she's performing in the courtroom, mm -hmm. all she really has to do is just win over one person. Right? That's right. That's right. All she needs is one juror to take sympathy on her or to believe her, and then they could say no, because in order to get the death penalty, it has to be a unanimous decision. And that's what this jury is going to be facing, mm -hmm. just like the last jury. So, like I said, sympathy, someone might believe her. Honestly, I don't think they're going to give her death. I don't think Arizona juries are ready to give a woman the death penalty now. Mm -hmm. So, as mm -hmm. we talk about that sympathy, another point is, we in, in the her first trial, we talked mm -hmm. a lot about what she wore. Yeah, her gl the glasses, mm -hmm. the um, the type of clothing, how she made her hair. Um, will that also come into play when she approaches the jury this time around? Oh, absolutely. Because remember, the jury, they're just normal people. They, they make opinions and judgments just like everybody else. So she needs to come out there and look intelligent, look powerful, know what she wants to say. But it could go against her because she's trying to say that she was abused, right? Mm -hmm. She was the weakling. She couldn't stand up and say no all those times before. Mm -hmm. So it could go one way or another, but she needs to look professional. So you'll see her in the jackets and likely the glasses again. During the trial, Juan Martinez was really hard on her. Now, do you think if she's representing herself in this penalty phase that he'll kind of back off a little bit? Oh, right. Juan <laughs> Martinez, back <laughs> off? I don't think so. He's no? probably, when he found out that she was representing herself, he's probably like, yeah, right, right? <laughs> but um, no, he's not going to go easy on her at all. We'll see much the same Juan Martinez we saw before. I've seen him in other trials. That is his speed. That's what he does. Mm -hmm. He will go after her because he believes that she should get the death penalty. So mm -hmm. we will see him on fire. So we've talked about some of the changes, privileges mm -hmm. that she might get as a result of representing herself. Um, she's going to be a part of the jury selection as well, that yes. means, correct? Yes. And so what type of jury do you think that she's going to be looking for? She's going to look for anybody who she thinks that she has some kind of connection with because she needs to get that one person, like you said, that one person to like her, to believe her, to sympathize with her. Mm -hmm. So she's going to be looking at more of a, a connection with the jurors. And of course, she'll look at their background and ask them the questions also. Now, when she's performing as her own attorney, does she also get to testify? How does that work? You know, that's a big question. Everybody wants to know, what is she going to take the stand? Is she going to talk? Yeah. She can do it a couple different ways. She can get up there and just tell her story, right? Like we saw her do before without anybody asking her questions. Or she can figure out a way to maybe get her advisory counsel to just read the questions. This is a death penalty case, so nothing is typical here. And it's Jody Aries, so really nothing is typical here. <laughs> Things can change. Um, but we will see her talk. She has to talk. She's yeah. claiming that she acted in self-defense and she should be given life, so she has to talk. How long is this going to take, do you think? Oh, I thought three months before, but now that she's representing yeah. herself, ooh, four maybe. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. You think there'll be a, a media frenzy like the last time with the, all the national... Yes and no. There's yeah. a lot of interest, but since it can't be rebroadcast until after, right, it yeah. might not be as crazy. Yeah. All right. Monica Lindstrom, appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you.